Hello, this is week four of my deadly spider tank, home slash prison. It was a very complex week because just previous to this week, I added Vaseline to the top of the tank and also around the top glass. So that restricted the spiders to having to live in another place. So these spiders are actually amazing engineers. And at this point here, they are setting up what I call a spider mezzanine level with their web. It was quite alarming to see how fast they adapted to a different environment. So maybe in seeing this, I'm starting to understand how these spiders have so easily taken over my backyard. Apart from being amazing engineers, these spiders are psychopaths. I'm absolutely certain of it, and we will get confirmation of that in this video. Before we go any further, I better throw up that warning. Warning! This video contains video of deadly spiders which will redefine the definition of the word deadly. The redback spiders in this tank adapted to the change in environment very fast. There's roughly eight, maybe nine females in here and one male. And what I've noticed is they can go through periods of doing nearly nothing and having their own little zones. Mind you, I have seen them work together on things and I've seen them share meals. And they can also just turn psycho. And we're about to see one of those moments. It was female versus female. I don't know what triggered this or why. Maybe it was territory. Maybe a spider expert can tell me but it gets very nasty very fast. And we'll watch this moment a couple of times over and you'll see the redback spider deploys a very, very sticky web to trap whoever it wants to kill. Now it must have been a major challenge to trap and kill one of its own because we know how fearsome and deadly the redback spider is. Quite amazing to see. So if you thought your family was crazy, mixed up and dangerous, well, the redback spiders are redefining that idea what a nasty girl. She goes and kills one of her sisters and then sucks her to absolutely zero. Now, the weird part here is that I did some reading up about these spiders. Remember, I'm not a spider expert. I'm just a dunce who makes videos on YouTube. And the wiki page experts will say, well, the females will cannibalize the males, especially at mating time. It seems to be part of the thing that they do. Yet, I don't remember reading anything about a female cannibalizing another female. And what I do notice is, because I can see into the future a bit, is there are some dominant females, very pregnant dominant females in this tank, and they seem to rule the roost. Nasty, nasty girls. Did I say at the beginning of this video, this is week four time-lapse edition? I think I forgot to say time-lapse. Time-lapse photography compresses time. You get to see things that happen over a grand period of time. It makes these spiders look awesome. I can tell you, you can sit next to this spider tank for many hours and it seems like nothing happens. But as soon as you capture these spiders in time lapse, they come alive. And what I notice is there are certain bugs and critters that I've put in this tank that sometimes you just never see. But the time lapse camera will capture them and hopefully we'll see them along the way in this video. I'm sure you'll see some old friends who you thought were dead are still alive. So from showing you a psychopathic female redback spider eating another one, I can now show you what looks like two female redback spiders working together in a community sense. There is a woody or a cockroach strung up with web and it's going to be sucked to nothing. And from what I can see, there is a sharing of meals. Mind you, I don't think they like to share their meals. Most times you'll see one spider with one thing that they've caught. There's also some egg sacs here which will be moved from one part of the tank to another. The redback spiders move the X-ax very carefully and it's done over a long period of time. The time-lapse footage compresses this and makes it look rushed and a little bit hard. Uh, they are very gentle with the X-ax and they use their back legs to drag the X-ax along and they are taking it up to the corner of the tank which ends up being a major zone for lots more X-ax in the coming weeks. There are many many more X-ax to be laid in this tank. Uh, capturing footage of XX being laid, I found is very difficult because I do give these spiders a natural night time where there's no camera, no light, and quite often they will do that in total darkness. I love capturing the time-lapse footage of when these spiders are feeding. I've seen it a couple of times now and I can't get enough of it. The large woody slash cockroach here was a meal for a couple of days and I'm pretty sure multiple spiders were feeding from it. They will suck up the juices of that critter up through the legs through the head and through the backside. I couldn't say the other word because this is Kitty's YouTube. Uh, it is quite impressive to see. And it seems like the redback spiders will just keep gorging themselves and gorging themselves. They just do not stop feeding. And because I've been reading the wiki pages on these spiders, trying to be an expert even though I'm not, I have read that these spiders can go for hundreds of days without feeding. So apart from the ability to gorge themselves meal after meal after meal, they can also go without food for very long periods of time. 
And the more that I read and the more that I witness and study about these spiders, I'm starting to realise they are very awesome. I don't need to explain every critter that passes by. You can see it in the video. In fact, many of them I can't even name. I think the thing with the pincers on its backside, the audience told me it was called an earwig. It's still around. Mind you, it doesn't last much longer. Let's be reminded that it was the YouTuber Beanmeister22 who gave me the idea to set up this terrarium. It was a fantastic idea. It's something I would normally not do, and it's something which is actually totally out of my comfort zone. But as I've worked out, the terrarium is only as interesting as the things that you put in there. Putting the deadly spiders in there, and lots of them, made this a very dynamic place. Week 4 was a place of much action. One very, very curious thing that happened was, midweek, I actually introduced a black house spider. Now, I showed in the other week 4 video how it was attacked and had the shivers of death, but it sort of came back alive, but then again, it was never itself. It was in the tank here and didn't do very much at all. I never saw it make any web. It sort of skulked around and did zero. In fact, it got attacked multiple times by the redback spiders. And yet, I never saw the redback spiders bind it in web and suck it to nothing, so maybe the redback spiders see other things as being a little bit too dangerous to suck on. And I've noticed with the way that they will kill is there are some things they will pounce on immediately. There are other things that they will let live for a couple of days, maybe a week. But sooner or later, you know what's going to happen. The redback spider is going to come along and nail it. I see it every time. Here is a sneak peek into the future up around week 7. Lots of things happen. In fact, I find even more redback spiders in my spider infested backyard. I also find what I call the devil bug. People tell me this bug is called a mole cricket. Apparently they're lucky to find. I put a redback spider up against the devil bug. Remember, last time the redback spider met one of these bugs, the bug died virtually instantly. Please leave a comment. Who do you think will win this battle, the redback spider or the devil bug? I better leave this video here. I hope you learned something about spiders because I'm not. As always, thanks for watching and bye for now.